Hello, I'm Yuko Yamashita. I teach marketing at Hitotsubashi University Business School. My research focuses on the transformation of the traditional value chain. I'm especially interested in the impact of inter-firm relationship upon product quality. I take an example of kimono as the industry with a very long history. We might easily think kimono is very peculiarly Japanese, but kimono actually is the outcome of the very long history of world trade. My obi was made about 100 years ago by combining the older pieces of fabric. The tiny pieces of applique are the 17th century Indian hand-printed chinch. And this one is Indonesian batik wax print. And the fabric is the St. Thomas stripe fabric, named after the Indian port, reflecting fanatic love for Indian cotton textile, which Japan. We are used to think we continuously live in progress. But in so many aspects, the quality of life is painfully declining. We cannot produce Persian or Chinese brocade, the Indonesian batik printed on the fine India cotton fabric, the Bengali muslin, because we have lost the natural materials, skills, and knowledges. Colonization, global competition, pursuit of low-cost production, and environmental contamination. So many factors have to be challenged. Kimono miraculously survived the difficult times, but has long been declining and is now at the deathbed. So many local districts have been lost. The technologies and the skills have disappeared. Silks are imported from China and Brazil. Sewing processes are sent to Vietnam. What can we do? I'd like to share with you the efforts and trials of the people who are transforming the industry. Textile dyer Yoshioka's business dates back to the late Edo period in the 1800s. When Yoshioka succeeded the business in 1988, he decided to concentrate on the natural dyeing and reduce the size of the business. In order to get the plant dyeing materials, they searched the farmers who can produce the plants. Also, he established a shop so that he can have direct contact with customers, set the prices, and control the stocks. This seems to be a small change, but this is a big shift from the craftsman's wage-based workshop to the dye-centered value chain. He works for the very old temples, shrines, and museums for the restoration of the old fabrics, published a lot of books and colors, through which he has rediscovered the value of the Japanese color. He has taught the Japanese the joy of connecting history and the nature to the present life through colors. This is a linen fabric dating back to the 18th century. I found at the antique shop in Kyoto. He picked indigo a la Kyoto, which is light and more elegant than the farmer's indigos. Since we have lost the fine linen production, we have searched for Indian linen. Global sourcing is getting more and more important. Second case is Takeshi Katsuyama at Nishijin, Kyoto. When Mr. Katsuyama joined the business, he thought that he had to create enchantingly beautiful textiles for kimono to survive. He started to restructure the present technology and worked on the modern design with a taste of Western clothes. He immediately realized that he could not find the beautiful silk thread or beautiful textiles in Kyoto. He finally started a sericulture business himself. Katsuyama is always trying different weaving technologies and concepts and keeps on studying. He even tries new threads coming out of the different species of silk worms. His customers are the ones who have well enjoyed the Western clothes. Why do they like Katsuyama's works? With the Western fashion industry today, you can't enjoy the processes of the creation because of the huge scale of division of labor. In Katsuyama's works, you can enjoy the whole process of creation. The beautiful thread, weaving, new colors and patterns. 
Olwa is inspired by the diminished old fabrics that interpreted very modern and actual. By communicating such new and innovative product, you need a tight relationship with the wholesaler and the retailers who share the deep knowledge about the products. Katsuyama has established a tight value chain with a new type of wholesaler, Raku Furin, and retailers who share the passions for kimono. Is the kimono's adventure today too small to revive the industry with such a vast, fast growing? I would like to show you materials from our university archives. As Hitotsubashi University's origin is a business school for educating specialists in global business, we have archives of material specimen used for the merchandise knowledge. This is Chinese silkworms of about 100 years ago. You see how white and shiny it is after a century? Japan still has an image of the country of silk. It is bound with the period when the silk was the important export items. The quality improvement of the silk was a crucially important national policy. They are the samples of silk thread. We see the stamp referring to the national interest. We see the efforts to catch up the Chinese silk quality. The quality gap was so large that the Japanese silk could not be used for the top quality dresses. Silk producers seek the other industrial usage, such as stockings and underwears. Kimono's present challenge in search of quality might seem so helpless in the global big wave towards the commodification. Does it make sense to restore the luxury good which were produced by sacrificing immeasurable amount of labor of the poor? Or has kimono just declined because it is inconvenient and does not fit the modern lifestyle? We cannot find present value of the past luxury by just reproducing it. But we can enlarge scales to define values by trying to understand the heritages, including the economic, social, and cultural backgrounds. Commodification, on the very contrary, makes the evaluation scale narrower by simplifying the quality measures and puts the emphasis mainly on the prices. And it leads us to the thrash and burn shifting production, which exploit the labor and environmental resources. The value of things are the synthesis of the complex factors and are changing continuously. This is the very reason why we have to keep redefining the value. We learn that kimono always has challenged a difficult changes. The kimono's adventure today is rethinking about the new value for the future. I believe in the power of kimono. <laughs>